Hi, this is a quick little follow-up to the last tutorial because evildoer, best username ever by the way, <laughs> says that this can be simplified with a the compare node. I'm gonna open the startup file, my startup file. So if you have the startup file, um, you can disable the shader ball and enable the earth object and then this one earth over here. And the cool thing here is that this uses the color mask that we created in the last tutorial. So if we go into here, you can see this is the node tree. These five nodes here that we use to get the hue, then make a little a slice of the color wheel, and then compare that to the other hue value and make sure that it's inside of that to select it. This can be done with a single node. So converter math, we set that to compare, and that does the same thing as those five nodes. So we compare this hue value with that hue value, and our epsilon here would be our, well, we, I called it tolerance. And now this output is the same as this output. So I can plug that in there and get rid of all of that. Okay. And then, of course, same thing for the saturation and the value. So this saturation here, saturation here, saturation here, saturation here, and then we have the saturation tolerance and the value tolerance. And we have to multiply that together like this. We still need those nodes because uh, the output here is now black or white, zero, one. And then we combine that with these two multiply nodes, and that's the same output. And um, if we check this output, you can see it's still selecting the the water in this case. So that's that much simpler and it still does essentially the same thing. However, of course, the entire idea and the why we're doing what we're doing is still uh, valid. And then uh, the second question from Antonio was, what about adding a little blur to feather the mask? And you can see here, if you have my uh, startup file and if you look at the earth object and the shader, you can see I'm doing that in here already. And the way that but that this is a blur node, it's also in an asset and it's part of the startup file. So here's the blur node group that you can just drag into your node tree if you have the startup file. And the blur works on vectors because we're working in 3D space here. We can't just have like a Gaussian blur node like in the compositor. So you have to blur in three dimensions and that's what that node tree does and you plug that into the UV. So we have Earth uh, JPEG twice in here. Once I'm blurring it. So if we look at this, for example, you can see that it's a blurry. And here's the blur amount. So I can turn this up. I can blur, this node can blur any texture. And I'm using this one for the color mask. So we get a blurry color mask. And then I have another Earth with a non-blurred uh, UV map. This is for the diffuse and this is for just for the color mask so I'm blurring the color mask and then this gives me this sort of it, it almost looks like um, a shadow in this case and of course this is a bit much and it's just to make uh, the edges of our mask uh, a little bit softer Now well, let's quickly look into the blur node if you're interested so what that does is it takes a noise texture with a very huge scale that gives you a value or values between zero and one, three dimensions. So uh, color would be RGB, we're in three dimensions, X, Y, Z. That's where, why we're using the color as a vector in this case. And a zero to one, but we want to go negative 0.5 to positive 0.5. So we're subtracting 0.5. So this would be a value of 0.5. And then we just add that to the vector and that's the output. And this one in, in here, this is just a multiply node so that we have, we don't have teeny tiny numbers out here. The important part is that we're adding a random vector to the vector, in this case, a UV map. And that way we're like scattering the coordinate system that we're using. If you want to know all the details about why we're doing what we're doing, um, then check out the tutorial, the full tutorial link is up there and of course in the description down below. Thanks to Evildoer and Antonio for your input. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. If you like this quick update video, please give it a thumbs up and of course consider subscribing. Thank you for watching, Crispy out.